Hey, this is Caio from EssentialDeveloper.com. Today we would like to discuss the importance of the basics for beginners and advanced programmers. So while we're teaching, we notice that many developers like to rush in to the cool stuff and they end up getting too attached to acronyms and language features and they forget the basic concepts behind them. And we believe that if we don't get the basics right, we cannot use our skills optimally. So in this first video, let's discuss objects. So we normally ask, what is an object? And we get good answers. For example, it's a reference type, it's a value in memory, referenced by an identifier or a pointer. Then we ask, okay, what can we do with an object? Well, we can encapsulate data and we can expose methods to manipulate the data. Okay, what else? Well, we can enable polymorphism through inheritance. Hmm, interesting, okay, so how do we create such objects? And things start getting interesting here. We normally get the reply, well, you need an object-oriented language. You need to use the class keyword to define the object interface or template. And then you initialize the object with the class name and you pass an initial state. Okay. So let's put those ideas in practice and stress the concept of an object and see what we can learn from that. So I got here an empty project. So let me create a test file. And let's do something simple. Let's create like a user class. Okay, so let's define our first class. Of course, we cannot compile this, so let's create the class. Let me open the tests on the right pane. Make some more space. Okay, so using the class keyword, we can define our class user. Now I can compile. Okay, but let's do something interesting with this user. Let's give it a first name and a last name. Again, it cannot compile, so let's give it an initializer. Okay, to compile again. But now, let's create an assertion that name should be the combination of first and last name. And again, it doesn't compile, so let me create a function that returns a string. Let's return just empty for now. I want to see a failing test first. Okay, it failed. So let's capture our first name and our last name and the full name function. We return the combination of both names. Okay, that works. So let's name this full name is the combination of first and last names. Let me make some more space here. Okay, so let's have a look at this class. So we have data that is encapsulated, so it's private. No one has access to it outside the scope of this class. We exposed an internal function that is some operation with this data and return a value. And what else can we do here? Like let's Let's mutate this object. Let's do something like set first name. So let me create a test for that. Uh, can update first name. So I can copy this. Now when I call set first name Chao, I want to change my name to Chao Zulu. Let's see what happens. It fails, so I need to set my first name to be the new first name. And I need to make this a var. So now we are performing operations on this class that mutates the internal state through methods or messages rather than exposing the data. Great. Now let's investigate inheritance. Let's say we have a class premium user that inherits from user. 
and let's create a test premium user appends a star to the full name so let's create a premium user here let me delete this and I expect the name to have let's say a star there you go it's a premium user let's run the tests and look at that it failed but I didn't get any compiler error because the premium user inherits all of the methods from the superclass including the initializer and all the other constraints like the internal data so when I call full name in the premium user I'm getting the behavior from the user class so to change the behavior of the full name I need to override the method so let's do that so in this new implementation of the method I can return the super implementation of the method that is the behavior defined in user and now I can append my star great there you go so just for the sake of it let's add another test to make sure that can update first name of a premium user so if I make this a premium user I want my star with the changed name let's run this there you go we got this behavior for free even though we overwrite the implementation of the full name we don't have to re-implement the set name okay that's good now my question is do I need the class keyword to define an object and to create an object do I need an object-oriented language can I have all these behaviors without the class keyword let's see first of all let's do some refactoring here let me create a method to create a user with first and last name and another factory method to create the premium user let me run to make sure that everything is still running and it is okay so let's try to recreate this behavior without the class keyword so let's start with the initializer well the initializer as you can see looks pretty much like a function that receives two parameters so let's start by creating a function let's call it make user object and it needs to return something it should return something that exposes some methods just like an object to we have a set method and a full name method so for now let's return a tuple with a set first name closure that receives a string and returns void and let's have another called full name actually the full name returns a string just like here great let's create this tuple set first name is a closure that receives a new string let's call it a new first name and the full name is a closure that returns a string so here let's return first name plus last name just like in the previous implementation okay it compiles so let's try to replace our user class instance with the new make user object type so here I'm going to replace the user with make user object and now I need to return the same type in here we're going to refactor this later no problem let's try to build and of course we need to change this to be set first name okay the first test passed but the second one didn't because we didn't implement a set first name so here things start getting interesting because I need to mutate this first name it needs to be captured by this closure so I'm gonna create a local variable here first name equals first name and now since this is a var I can change this inside this closure and I'm gonna use the underscore first name in my full name implementation let me run this again and it passes all right same behavior okay let's do the same thing for the premium user object let me copy and paste this very quickly make premium user object first name last name uh, this is first name plus last name plus uh, the star 
Let me replace this in the test usage. And the return type. Okay, all the tests passes. But there's a lot of repetition here. Look, we're implementing this again, and this again, and in the previous class-based solution, we inherited those things for free. So how can we have polymorphism without the class keyword or without inheritance? Let's try something here. What if we create a user here? And now we return another tuple. And we reuse the user.setFirstName function. And in the full name implementation, we're going to use the user full name plus the star. You can make this a let now, run the test again, passes. Right, so look how close this looks to the premium user. It looks pretty similar. Actually, I even gonna call this something else. So what if I call this super? Does it make sense now? <laughs> Let's run the test once again. They all pass, great. So I'm gonna delete the class-based solution. Let's do some refactoring here and create some type aliases. Let's change it in the test as well. Let's run the tests. They all pass. And we have created an object without the class keyword. Because the truth is, an object is a concept and object-oriented languages Make it a first class citizen and you have the class keyword to define those interfaces and then we can define inheritance and all of that. But an object can also be just data or it can be a function if we understand what an object is. We can notice that I may be using this concept. I was not calling it an object, but behind the scenes I was using an object. And let me show you what I mean. By changing this type alias to be a struct. Now I can just initialize this with the right name. And I can do the same here. With the premium user, let me run the tests. They pass. There you go. I have created an object by using the struct keyword. Isn't that crazy? A lot of people get surprised by this because we get so attached to the semantics and we forget the basics. So I show this trick to a lot of people and they say, wow, I've been saying that objects are a bad thing, but I've been creating them as a function or as a tuple or as a struct. And I had no idea I was creating an object. So objects are not evil, depends how you use them. And a lot of people that think objects are evil, they are actually using objects all the time to achieve their goals. I think anyone can learn something from this. We definitely learned a lot by doing those exercises. And we noticed that most advanced programmers we meet they are very, very good at the basics, the simple stuff. They continually practice katas, they learn new languages, they relearn old concepts. So never stop learning. Okay, we hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.